You're such an asshole. Hey everybody, last video for the day, and just for you know, uh, the old captain will be going on vacation on Monday. That's coming up uh, Monday the 5th. Uh, I will be coming back the 12th, if I do the math right. Uh, I will still be on call for emergency consultations, but my price will double at a rate of $200 per hour. Uh, so if you can wait until the 12th, it'll go back down to the regular $100 an hour. Oh, but you don't have to worry about prices being that high because I never or rarely do I charge $100 for a video because they don't take an hour. Anyway, so uh, I got to go on vacation per the doctor's orders and take it easy. Apparently, you it can work too much, even if it is fun shit like this. Regardless, so uh, just so you know, assholeconsulting.com goes if you have questions, but uh, the old captain will uh, be incognito, unless you're going to pay me to shorten my life, basically. Uh, hey, Cappy, do you think Donald Trump will be able to secure a 4 to 5% GDP growth rate for, even for just a given year during his presidency? He's got to contend with government spending and the debt, which makes it all that much harder, but he doesn't seem like a man who backs down from a challenge. Thanks, Kyler. <clears throat> and thank you very much, Kyler. Uh, great short question, and there's a great question on top of it. Now, let me go to my notes. Because I had to consult uh, Trump's 100-day plan, or his 100-day pledge, and uh, look at the economics. There's a lot of things that have nothing to do with economics, uh, more like sovereignty and, you know, like, hey, you're not American, get the fuck out. Uh, and the people, oh my God. It's just, it's just, it's funny when you read through it, it's like this common sense, any self respecting nation would do this shit, but the population is so brainwashed to hate itself, it's so divided along race and gender that it's like, oh, oh he's a racist, he's a Nazi, yeah. Anyway, um, so what I did is I focused on four things here <clears throat> that would directly affect economic growth. And I, <clears throat> obviously for the positive, because no president comes in, I'm going to do these things, it's going to happen, it's going to hurt the economy. So this is obviously, oh, it's all well intended. But the question is, will it get 4 to 5% even for a year? Well, now 4 to 5% maintaining consistently 4 to 5% economic growth uh, for four quarters in a row, that's kind of rare. And I think the last time that happened was Reagan. Maybe Bill Clinton under the dot-com boom, but it's, to, I mean, the last time we had, I mean, like 4.5% was the average. That was in the 50s and the 40s. Those evil white racists beat your wife daily with the daily wife. That, you know the sirens? <clears throat> Those weren't for, for warnings about tornadoes or Russian bombers. That was to tell men when it was time to beat their wives. And it was set by municipal, uh, by the county, like, Sometimes it would go off at noon. Sometimes the siren would go off at six. Sometimes it would go off at nine to serve as both a a, um, a curfew bell and to know that you should beat your wives. But uh, some only did one, some did three. So if you're lucky enough, you lived in a city where you could beat your wife three times a day. And that was all they did in the 40s and 50s. Anyway, uh, so it's rarer now to get for reasons you, you highlight given the national debt and spending and all this, this leftist socialist uh, um, uh, obfuscation. I, I like to call it regulation, but it really is just obfuscation with the pipeline and the idiot Indians up north. You don't come through our land. I was like, oh, shut up. Enjoy being poor some more, all right? Yeah, oh, you don't want any infrastructure. Okay, fine, fine. Just go around. Just just go around. But, uh, so it's, it's I don't know if, if he could get it like consistently, but average, yeah, I think he could, if he really wanted to, we could get the economy to boom like six or seven percent in one quarter, <clears throat> made them back down to three, then then to four. So on average, I think he totally could do a four percent, five percent, yeah, you'd really have to have a boom in a year to have that. Um, but it is possible. I think it is really possible. If I was in charge, I could deliver seven. And I, I'm pretty certain, I'm pretty confident I could get you seven consistent for a whole year easy but i'd have to be like a dictator and that's not going to happen so given his restrictions with democracy <laughs> and what he's got to face here's the four things in his pledge that will directly affect economic growth one uh oil production he has this idea that we can unlock and unleash the potential of the 50 trillion dollars in u.s energy reserves and that may be true we have 50 trillion dollars worth of natural gas and uh, methane and, and oil and coal uh, but that you don't you don't bring that all up to production in one year. We're not going to have fifty trillion dollars of production in one quarter. Um, and on top of it, it also depends on prices. Right now, um, the uh, there, there's not a glut, but there could be a glut of oil uh, simply because we got the fracking going on. American producers flooded the global market with oil. <clears throat> drove the price down. Saudi Arabia says, well, heck, well, I'll produce everybody. Drove the price down even further. 
And that's why you start seeing price of gas go below $2 a, a gallon. Uh, it, it, it's not just because it's lower and we can drill it doesn't mean it's profitable to. So he can pull off all the restrictions. If the price of energy, oil, gas, whatever else have you is so low, that's not going to create jobs. It's not going to create economic growth. So that's commodity dependent and dependent on the price. So if all of a sudden Saudi Arabia says we're cutting off production all the way and also the price of oil goes up to three, yeah, that'll help us out. Um, we'll be that that help out a lot, that'll help us, us out very nicely, but that's unlikely to happen because Saudi Arabia wouldn't do that to themselves. Um, eliminating all the blocks and obfuscations, and I would say sabotage is really what it is of infrastructure projects like the Keystone Pipeline, the thing going up north up there uh, where the Indians are protesting. Uh, that that would definitely help in the media in short term. <clears throat> I don't think it would result in much more than 0.1 percent, but it'd help. It'd be a little bit of a boost. What would really help out, and this would not help out literally on the numbers. It would help out in ideal. It would give. It would boost confidence, and then there'd be a fair amount of additional investment that would follow because there'd be faith in a better future in America, and that is repealing the Obamacare Act, uh, getting rid of that. Uh, and if they did it immediately, like you don't need to have, I mean, the, uh, the people have spending money the next month in their pocket because they won't have to be paying these egregious fees uh, for, um, for insurance premiums. That money would then go somewhere else. That right there, I had estimated about a half to three quarters of a percent, just like that in a quarter. And for the rest of the year, too, <clears throat> well, in perpetuity because we don't have to spend that shit money anymore on bailing out losers who didn't work to pay for their own health care. Because why the fuck should they? They're lazy and they're stupid. Uh, and so it, that doesn't come anywhere near 4 or 5%. But what does? What does? And this is where I think, and this is what old President Clary would do. The Middle Class Tax Relief and Simplification Act. Um, he's going to cut money to on all levels, so that's fine. Particularly the middle class. They'll help boost spending. That'd probably add maybe 3 quarters of percent. But where it's really going to come in is where he eliminates the corporate tax rate from 35% to 15%. That makes a lot more investments more profitable and optimal here in the United States than overseas. <clears throat> that would result in more. I know, I know leftists hate corporations, but then they want jobs. But they hate corporations, but they want jobs. I don't know how you guys reconcile that, but I'm not a leftist, thank God. Uh, so that would attract a lot of capital. We'd be on par with Canada. And if it was permanent, like, it, it's one thing if you just, oh, we're going to lower it. Well, until what, the Democrats raise it next year? Uh, until we, we ham and haw. Uh, what they should do in, in Capuland, I'd eliminate the corporate tax and make a constitutional amendment that businesses are not taxed here. We want your business. The United States is open for business permanently. There's none of this, oh, the evil corporations. I'd fucking, that shit ends now. You want jobs? We want jobs. We want investors. Please come to the United States. What can we do to make it easier for you to bring your jobs? So that, I would say, is going to add God, I'd like to say 2%. If they made it permanent, that would add, a, a, in the short and even medium term, I think that would add one and a half to even 2% in the short term uh, economic growth. And this right here, if he got this, the 10% repatriation of overseas corporate money, there is, depends on what measure you want to use, around $2 trillion of money sitting offshore in corporate accounts. He wants to lower the corporate tax rate down to 10%. You can bring that money back here. They're right there. I mean, that that would that would now we have a ton of capital just sitting like, well, what do we do now? And it's like, well, what don't we do? That would really the the lower tax rates, the more favorable business environment, and and the re, lower repatriation rate. Uh, that would not only give businesses the incentive to invest here, but the money as well. The final thing, and this is not imply, it's not explicit, but maybe more implied and implicit is if we can convince businesses that America does not hate them and we don't hate success and we don't hate production and we don't hate wealthy people and we, we want companies to come here and invest and we can assure them, that's why I would say make it a constitutional guarantee that no, the corporate taxes are not going up, um, <clears throat> that would really solidify the long-term economic growth rate of the United States. Uh, but because of what is nothing more than rank jealousy that has been brainwashed uh, into young kids who are now adults my age and the baby boomers and the kids and the millennials of today to, to have this irrational hatred of corporations and then at the same time bitch about not having jobs. I, I just, I don't know how 
you, you cannot, I don't care how many degrees you have, you're not a smart person if you don't see how those are mutually exclusive or contrary to one another. If we can convince businesses and pass it into law, basically guaranteeing them, we're not going to jack up taxes on you after you've invested $2 billion in a semiconductor factory. That will go a, a long way. And then I'd be thinking more along the 5% for four quarters growth on average economic growth. So is it possible? Yes, it absolutely is. Impo it, is impo it is possible. Uh, it really is. It's one, if Trump can get it through Congress and Republicans don't turn rhino and betray him or the American people, it really help out if Trump and the government would start telling teachers, hey, knock it off with this fucking we hate corporations or it's the evil corporations, man. But I mean, that shit has, has not worked since the fucking 60s. All right? Knock it the fuck off. We'd like employees here. Thank you very much. Please invest here. If the United States wanted to, we could, we could just steal other countries' corporations. Japan's got, wouldn't you like to have Sony over here? Have Mitsubishi have their headquarters over here? All the jobs that would come with that because we got a 0% tax rate and Japan's got a 40% tax rate? Wouldn't you like to steal, uh, well, not Nokia, they're not even a thing anymore, are they? I mean, think every major international corporation say, come here, zero percent taxes, please come here. And this would not be shitty hard labor jobs either, mind you, by the way. The corporate headquarters would be here. This would be accountants, lawyers, staff people, nice air-conditioned things. Uh, that would be a real big boom to the economy. It's, it's whether America wants it or I mean, literally, it is that, it is that fucking simple. It's whether you leftist retards can give up your fucking irrational hatred for corporations and employers and realize you want them on your side. I mean, the, the blue-collar Democrats, the ones who actually work for a living, all six of them on the Democrat side, they woke up over in Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Ohio, I think it was. And they voted in because they want jobs. But you social justice warriors, non-profit, you, you pussies who don't have, you have no intention of working a real job, you just want a government check. Um, yeah, you guys are beyond beyond explaining uh, that because you just it's your religion to hate corporations. You need an enemy, irrational or not. But for you blue collar Democrats, you know you want jobs, you want a booming economy, you want the oil pipelines, you want the coal mines operate. Well, who do you think? I can't make fun of you anymore because you woke the fuck up. I never thought you guys would wake up. Forty years of life, you guys finally woke up. Welcome to the good side of the force. So, anyway, but yeah, totally doable. It's just. I was, if I was in fucking command, if I was like an economic advisor to Trump, I could do so much fucking good. Instead of me ringing the bells, Dad, there's a housing crisis coming. Oh, shut the fuck up. Dad, there's, a, there's an education, not education bubble. There's that too. The other one. Dot com. Ah, oh, dot coms are all shut the fuck up. You don't know what you're talking about. All right, never mind. You don't want me on staff. Anyway, hope that helps out. Best luck to all of you. Toodles.